here. Well, good morning. Good morning. Glad that you're here. I'm Rabbi Brian, as it says here on the screen. Um, I am hosting this Saturday service. I'm uh, delighted to be able to do it. Whatever time it is, wherever it is that you are, I'm glad that you're here. Some people are watching on the web. I'm glad that you're watching. People are listening to this afterwards. Glad that you're listening. And there are some people who are already here with me. People are still trickling in. But let me give uh, extra props to the people who are here. People who are here, wave, say hi. Say hi to each other. Hi, hi. hi everybody. Hi on the web. And people and glad you see guys you. are here. All right. Good morning, good morning, and, and good morning to the people who I see just logged in on Facebook or on Twitch. I can't tell which streaming service you logged in on or on YouTube, but I, I know that you're here. If you put in comments, uh, there is a chance that I will see them and add it to the discussion. If you are in the Zoom room, um, as you know, I love to have the microphones open so that people can all participate. Um, so I'm glad that you're here. Blah, 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 blah. I think I've said I'm glad that you're here enough times already. But I am glad that you're here. <laughs> and we also are glad that you are here. If you want to use the chat in Zoom, um, I do not see that until the service is completely over. So um, do not private message me. If there's something you, you want or you need, the chat is moderated. Our friend Joe watches the chat. So thank you, Joe, for doing that. And I thank Alex, as always, and for coming back from, from illness uh, to be with us today, helping with tech support. Um, all right, so I'm going to start with this this idea. Well, first, oh, no, I want to wasn't start. sick. I was on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you went to Morrow Bay. I went to, I went to Cayucas, California. Spent right. two nights at hotel. Glad, glad you've recovered. <laughs> um, I want to start with something that we have not started with, but I thought, you know, this is, it, it, its absence is really, really loud to me. So I want to acknowledge where I am currently, and I am in Multnomah County, Oregon. And Multnomah County acknowledges that the land we occupy as residents is unceded indigenous land. The Portland metro area rests on the traditional village sites of Multnomah, Wasco, Cowlitz, Calamit, Kalakamis, bands of Chinook, Tualatin, Cayupa, Molawa, and other tribes that made their homes among the Columbia River, creating both permanent communities and seasonal encampments. Due to the strategic and systematic efforts to annihilate indigenous people from these lands in history, there are many other nations and tribes that traditionally lived, hunted, and fished in what we now, what now Monomar and Oregon, that are not collectively remembered. I wanted to take a moment um, for us to acknowledge that where we call home might not uh, have been earned home and that we might be living on land that is not really our own. And I wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that. And if you don't know whose land you are sitting on, may I make the recommendation that you do those ancestors the grace of at least finding out who they were, who they are. <coughs> okay. That's a somberish kind of note to start with, but it feels important to do. If you would care to in the in the chat, oh, and Shirley Wayness, who is on Facebook, she's she is she has truly not been feeling well. She's had COVID for twenty something days. She says hi. Oh. She's here. So we're glad, mm. glad that you're here. Alex, in the chat, can you put in a link to the shared document? If, yes. If you are um, able to, and if you have a little extra brain space while the service is going on, while we're having this discussion, if you would keep timestamps of what's going on in the service, um, I would greatly appreciate that so that at the end of the service, we can post and people can know what was there. We don't have to go into micro detail. But just, you know, from from now until whatever time it is, we do an introduction to the service. Oh, there we have it in land acknowledgement. If you would please on them put in uh, double times. So the start time and the end time, because that's the way that 
YouTube makes sense out of that. So thank you guys for helping with that. And let me say hi to Jocelyn and Amy and Candace and Chad and Lisa and Ann, Patricia, Carol and Bob and people I haven't said yet good morning to. Good morning. I'm glad you guys are all here. Um, we're going to start with a choose your own adventure. You guys remember these <laughs> books? Choose your own adventure books. Choose your own adventure. And I wrote it out. And I'm going to read it to you, and I'm going to see how this goes. This is your own, choose your own adventure. And let me read to you. You are on the web, not right this moment, right? This moment is not that moment. This was written about a different moment that you're on the web. You are on the web, semi-aware of all that is in front of you. All is as you would expect, nothing surprising. You are doing your thing, normal, ordinary. But then whammo, the unexpected, you receive a captcha with images and it declares select all images of hills to continue. <laughs> now we're at the bottom of the yep. page where the choice is. If you, wait a moment. If you take a breath and consider it a lovely moment to rest, reflect, and peacefully, if you if you can if you take a breath and consider it a lovely moment to rest and reflect, turn peacefully to the next page. If you cast negative judgments on yourself and others, start this page again. Oh. So you get, how many of us have had, I'm going to put on this so I can see all of your faces at the same time. How many of you have been doing your thing on the web and then all of a sudden you get one of those select all images of bicycles and you get frustrated? <laughs> Is it the bicycles that are the thing that's frustrated? Right? It's the bicycles. It's obviously the bicycles. It's not the bicycles. It's Brain. It's, Train, it's get all bridges. the trains. What are the other things you've had to Stop see? Lights. Stop, Stop lights. lights. Traffic lights. Traffic yeah. lights. Bridges. Bridges. Road signs. And is, is any one of those images more annoying than another? I don't think so. I don't think it's the images that are the annoying thing. What if we get the images, but we don't get frustrated? Well, that's what I'm trying to get to, Bob. <clears throat> oh, okay. Thank you. You're ahead of the page, Bob. <laughs> what if you read ahead no fair what if we had that and we could like bob suggesting take a moment to <clears throat> say oh this is a great opportunity like we talked about last week to slow down for a moment instead of looking at the image and going oh this is going to eat into my time this is going to make it worse this makes it that I, I, I'm, I'm now an extra 20 seconds behind on the task that I was doing. What if instead, next time you saw one of those CAPTCHA select all the bicycles, you thought, hey, this is an opportunity for me to take a breath. We're willing to try it. I got, I got one person willing to try it, and you know what? That's good enough for me. The rest of you, no? Yeah, I'll try. Hi, Jocelyn. Good to see you. Hi, Candice. Good to see you. Hi, Betsy. Good to see you. Glad to see you guys are all here. Um, I'm going to... Hi, Michael and Derek and anyone else whose name I haven't said yet. Okay, well, that was the entirety of Choose Your, <laughs> Choose Your Own Adventure. Glad, glad we did that. Oh. So, oh. I do have a question on that, though, because I'm trying to... Go ahead. Thank part you, of, when you first said it, the first thought to me was, okay, prejudging um, and, and, you know, judging the environment or judging how this is going to impact you. And I came back to a time when someone in my life had looked at me and the, the first moment I met them, it was my, uh, it was actually a pretty critical moment. His, her son was introducing me as his future wife. Anyway, she made it very wow. clear based on gossip that I was not, I was not approved oh. and uh, yeah, based on gossip. And so that's actually kind of what came up into my head because this week I forgave her 
Oh, whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. That's fantastic, I think, Jocelyn. No? <sighs> yeah, that was yeah. hard. Actually, I was I Did was you just do across... like a full breath of air out? Yeah, I did. Good for you. It was, I, I actually stumbled across her uh, obituary, and I don't actually know when she died, but I was looking at some um, old information from my old hometown, seeing if I can find um, uh, an article back then. And I stumbled across it, and I went, oh, my goodness. And, and she said three words to me in my entire life. And you were able... That's a great skill. There, I, there's a quote, and I have it in, a, in an article that's coming up. It's a Robert Brault quote, and I'm afraid I might not get it exactly correctly. But he said, there's a great peace that happens when we're able to accept the apology of somebody who never gave it. Mm. Ooh. There's a great okay. peace that happens when we're able to accept the apology of someone who never gave it. I ended up not marrying her son. Okay. And even though he probably, you know, I'm not going to judge that relationship. It may have gone bad. It may have gone good. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But I always blamed my kind of veering off into, uh, uh, into other areas in my life uh, on that moment. And honestly, it's not fair to her for right. me to blame her for that. And you were able to forgive her, even though you never got a full apology. I told my doctor and she told me I needed to get more hormones checked, but it turns out they're fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you went to the doctor as well. Keep, keep that all in check. Um, anyone else have that experience of being able to forgive someone? who never gave an apology i i was i did this actually um with my mom not too long ago we were at the kitchen table we had flown in for my niece's bat mitzvah and we're sitting at the dining room table let me see if i can remember the whole way the story works oh and i was telling my mom about a woman who came up to me have i told you guys this story about the woman who comes up to me during the bat mitzvah and she says Rabbi, do you keep kosher? Did I tell you guys this story? No. Oh, so I've been in this rabbi game long enough to know exactly what's going to happen in this. She's going to say, Rabbi, do you keep kosher? And really, she's just asking. I'm pretty certain. Um, and it winds up that I, I was right. She's really just asking so that she can tell me that she does. And she can, she can win that round. So she says, Rabbi, do you keep kosher? And I say, and I'm telling this story to my mother and Uncle Ira, and I say, I quoted to her, I believe that kosher's more about what comes out of my mouth than what goes into my mouth. Isn't that a good quote? That kosher's more about what comes out of my mouth than what goes into my mouth. And to prove that she wasn't listening, she says, well, I keep kosher. <laughs> And I'm telling this story. <laughs> I'm telling the story to my mom and to Uncle Ira and Emmett's there and Jane's Jane's hovering near the table. And I say, what I didn't tell the woman was that that quote is actually from Jesus shortly after the Sermon on the Mount. That quote's in there. It's in the Gospel of Mark and the Gospel of Matthew. And it's a it's a great quote, but nobody knows it. Um <clears throat> And my mother says to Emmett, Emmett, Emmett's on the computer. He's backing up Jane's phone. So he's uh, got a computer in front of him. And my mother says to Emmett, Emmett, check that out. And Which Jane, book? Jane says, <laughs> Jesus, Elaine. That's my mom's name. Jesus, Elaine, your son's a scholar. I'm pretty sure if he says that's in the Gospel of Matthew and the Gospel of Mark, <clears throat> that it is. And Jane says, I've had enough. She's with no heat behind it because it's not her mother. She's able, and she's fantastic. She just, she says, that's enough. I'm going to bed. She, she trails off. And I say to my mother, I, I do my best to help people save face. And I say, well, you know, it is an interesting thing. We could look up to see what word is Jesus using to mean kosher? Because obviously in the Greek, it would it would be in Greek, and what word was Jesus using instead of kosher, and can I figure out? And so 
I, I make a little bit of a, like, my mom's comment wasn't that insulting. Fine. Later on, Jane comes back. My mom has moved on. Emmett and I are still sitting there at the computer fixing her phone. Uh, and Jane comes in and says, well, did your mother, uh, did your mother apologize? I said, yeah. Oh, because, oh, my mother did come back in. And my mother said, she said, when Emmett, when I told Emmett to look it up, what I was trying to do, I wasn't insulting you. This is what she said. She said, when I told Emmett to look it up, I wasn't insulting you. I wanted to teach Emmett not to take things for granted, not to take things at face value. I was like, okay. Jane comes back in and I say, uh, my mom apologized. <clears throat> And she said, really? I said, well, I took what she said to be an apology, and that was good enough for me. Mm. I took what she said to be an apology, and that was good enough to me. And that was that Robert Brault quote, which I later found, was, we get a great sense of peace when we're able to accept the apology that was never offered. So let me, let me offer this for this moment. Um, bless you. Can you think, I'm sure you can, think of somebody in your life who never offered that apology that you would be at much greater peace if you accepted the apology they never offered. I'm not saying you have Hopeless. to do it. I'm not Ooh. saying in every situation is it, but is there something that, is there, is there a movable, I'm going to go with the Jenga analogy. You know the game Jenga? Oh, Roma. yeah. Is there a piece that's evil, easily movable in your life situation right here where it won't cause the whole thing to fall down, where you can forgive somebody? For something that they've never asked for, they've never asked for forgiveness. Yeah. Can you, can you, do you have a piece that you can easily enough move without? I see a few heads moving with like yes kind of things. I see, a, I see, I see a few, a few of, yeah, maybe uh, I'll, 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 I'll contemplate it. Okay. Well, let's leave that one as a homework for next week. And speaking of homework for next week, oh, we have homework for, for from last week for this week. Science fair. Let me make a note. Um, forgiveness. That's for next week, forgiveness. Last week I offered you guys the opportunity to do science fair. To pick a project in your own spiritual life. Make a hypothesis. Seek out some data. See what you can learn. Anyone have a science fair report? at the ready or you want to give us a progress update where you are in your science fair yeah maria go go right ahead so i picked the four to one okay and tell everyone what that is because not all of us know what that is that was the four positive neutral uh statements comment sort of thing to one negative yeah, to any correction, you have to have four positive to neutral yes. statements. Um, yeah. Okay, yeah. tell us, what did you learn, Maria? <laughs> what did you, and remember everyone, your results may differ, but here's what Maria learned. Well, I learned that on Saturday, I, I didn't carry that with me. So it was like, okay, I'm going to start Sunday. <laughs> I'm start Sunday. Um, and, and actually, I, I did quite well. You know, I sort of, there were times when it was sort of like, okay, it's just sort of a, I don't know, a regular moment, but I thought, okay, let's just throw something out. Let's just throw something out there. So it's out there. Is this you interacting with other people or is this all you within your own mind? Oh no, me with it. I gave up on me within my own mind. Okay. This was okay, me okay, interacting. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> just, so this is you interacting with another human being. Go and yes. tell us what happened again. Yes. So, so I was, I was just throwing out comments sort of just to get to my four to one. Although some of them were, I mean, they were positive. And really, the person I interact most with during the week is my mother, mm -hmm. right? Um, and and it felt I, like it felt good to me because um, she's recovering. And so she doesn't always see her progress. Um. So and so those were the things that I most mostly commented on. 
And, uh, and then once in a while, I found when I was slipping a little or not as aware of it, um, mom would say something positive. And, and then it, I, I, so um, it went quite, it went quite well this week. Okay. Um, I, I had a, for me, I, um, I was having a really tough time starting on Monday sort of thing. And I could hear myself going toward the the negative. So I did at one point say to myself, okay, if you can't say anything positive, at least like just don't say anything at all. Like, and this is this is internally. <laughs> this is internally. This yeah. is the internal part. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, I was think... trying to at least hold it to neutral. For myself. It, so th this is. Uh, thank you, thank you, Maria, for sharing this. This this is a, a a. It's really can be a wake up call once you start to see what your baseline is. Right, and then we can make progress from there. But just looking at one's baseline and saying, "Holy shit!" If I am honest and I look at the soundtrack to my commentary on my own life within my own head. It's one to four. <laughs> and, and the only way to change it is to first be aware of it. So Maria, you, you good, good on you. Good on you. Keep up science fair homework. You get a raffle ticket. Um, nice. Two. I want, I want two. You get three <laughs> because you advocated for yourself. So I'm going to put your name on the back of these. <laughs> I am going back to putting people's names on the back of them. I don't know if we will have a drawing or not. It depends on whether or not I can get the raffle ticket wheel back from Annie, who has absconded with all my raffle <laughs> tickets. Anyone else with science fair homework they want to? Yeah, go ahead, Alex. I, I, I also did the one to four. And here, here's an interesting, interesting question is, did Scott notice? Oh, because he did not really know that I was doing this, right? So, you know, the, so the idea of the one to four is to say, you know, four positive or at least neutral things for every, you know, criticism. And I was trying really hard to make sure that I was saying positive things as opposed to criticism. So the question is, is did you even notice? I thought you were being pretty all positive. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I did there, notice. there we go. So we have, we have proof in the pudding. Well, well, well how played. did it make you feel? better i guess <laughs> yeah it, it can't not it can't not anyone anyone we have not heard jocelyn i see you i want to see if there's anyone we haven't yet heard from who wants to share about their science fair homework and if you did not do your science fair homework it's not due yet it's not due this week it's not due next week it's due the very beginning of june yeah <laughs> That's not true. It's not ever really due. You don't have to do. Oh, I, I will. I'm going to harp on that in a moment. Let's go to Jocelyn, and then I'm going to go back to my little rant. So on the side, when I get bored, I ended up getting into um, esoteric studies and Kabbalah and things like that. And it's, it's strange. But this time I was actually uh, discovered something that was absolutely delightful. I was studying uh, Saturn, Benya, Benya. <coughs> kinds of things. And I found out that in some areas, Saturn is depicted as uh, like the old man with the beard and yeah, and, yeah. and yeah, in a lot of, but however, Saturn is female in some areas. Well, so they depict him the as an old woman with a beard and all that other stuff. So, just the fact that this this uh, mm. um, this old man image is actually potentially mm. an, uh, a crone makes me, since I'm going into that area uh, of my life, makes me feel so much better. Like it kind of, it, I, it, love it. I feel I like love I connect a, a little bit more with it. I love it, Jocelyn. I'd love to talk with you more about that later. Uh, I appreciate you you bring that up. Let let me. Um, uh, I have a few announcements, and then I'm going to uh, preach towards you guys in a moment. Um, I do want to bring you um, this first little announcement. If you live in Oregon, this is for you. 
please go to the following website that you see up there, Lift Every Voice Oregon. You can yeah. sign Petition 17 without having to wait outside New Seasons with somebody to have a clipboard. You can print out the form yourself. You can print out forms for everyone in your household over 18 and have them sign. Um, it's it's a petition. It, it's not... It's, it's a pretty simple petition, this one. It's It's this. <laughs> It's to ban ammunition magazines over 10 rounds and permit a permit to purchase a firearm. And that's going to, we're trying to get that um, enough signatures so that we can have that legislation. Uh, so if you live in Oregon, please do that. Um, thank you kindly. Other announcements. Um, other parts of the science fair were trying to do the no complaining. Yeah, I did um, that one. To, to be brave and honestly answer how you are when somebody asks. Um, and to notice what do you do, what do you honestly do, and we'll come to this one maybe again in a bit, what do you do when people don't do the thing you think they should be doing? And to just keep a running tally of here are the reactions that I have when someone doesn't do the thing I think they should be doing. And to keep a list of that, and maybe a scatter plot will come from it. Here, here's my, my, my little bully pulpit part. Hi. You guys say hi back. Hi. 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 I gladly and <clears throat> seriously gladly, and I'm owed nothing for it run this service for an hour. I spend hours preparing for this service and you owe me nothing for that. I do it because I love doing it. I would like you to consider spending an hour of your time working on spiritual development in the week between Saturday services. Right? It's lovely that you're doing it now, but I'd like, and it doesn't have to be one full hour. It can just be that slow, slow thing Every time you're asked, how are you, answering that question. Every time you get a CAPTCHA page, it, every time you, and to see, can I make that a moment of relaxation? <clears throat> I'm going to ask you over the course of the next week to please slowly do something to nudge your spiritual religious life uh, towards the positive. Okay, I'm off my little soapbox now. And... Okay. I have... Just remember to close the cover. Definitely close the cupboards. Okay. When you get off your soapbox. Okay. I, that's the weird one, though, Bob. Because um, Jane gets a... Like, if any of the cupboards and doors are open in the kitchen, it drives Jane absolutely batty. So, um, it, it threw me for a moment. Like, how does Bob know that? <laughs> so here's I'm going to give my b message to the beloved community I'm going to give you a 10 minute message it's going to be like this uh, countdown overlay I'm going to give myself 10 minute time because that went so well last week we're going to start it again this week here goes my 10 minute pitch my 10 minute talk to you my beloveds I'm going to ask everyone to please Get up some paper and a pen. Oh, Get oh. some paper and a pen. And I'm going to ask you in the next two minutes to have one minute of active pen time. So of the two minutes that I'm going to start a timer on, I'm going to ask you to keep your pen moving for at least one minute. So you can, you have to add more detail. You can look straight in front of you at the screen in front of yourself. And I want to ask you to make a drawing. I want you to draw yourself. Make a sketch of yourself the way you see it in the Zoom box. Whatever you see. And while you're drawing, notice here's the task at hand. The task is to notice what it is that you're thinking in the 10 minutes. So we got another minute and 30 seconds of drawing time.
and you are drawing yourself while thinking whatever it is you notice in your own head as you're doing this. And we got about 50 more seconds. I, I'm so glad to see so many of you, your pen's moving. You're not just doing one line. You got a whole bunch of lines. You will never have to show the picture you are drawing to another human being. Good, because my pen's out of ink, sort of. Okay. And we got 30 more seconds of drawing time. And I will tell you ahead of time what we are going to do. We're going to be looking, so you got another 20 seconds, so 10 more seconds of pen moving on the paper. And I will Okay. Here's my drawing. It's hard to tell which is me and which is the drawing of me. I know that. They look so so gosh darn similar. <laughs> and I want you to take a moment. And I want you to think about, and this is the topic of today. The topic of today is pride. Mm -hmm. And I, there's, mm -hmm. a lot, there's a lot that I want to say about pride. First of all, we're using often the wrong word. So <clears throat> let me let me clarify what words that we're using. There's the word pride and that is a natural emotion. We have pride in our accomplishments. We have pride. Pride's a natural thing to do. There's an exaggeration of pride which is known as conceit. That's when you have pride, but it has nothing to do with reality. That's a pride that is a dangerous pride. And often authors use the word pride when they meant to use the word conceit. And that makes for this a very difficult conversation. When we talk about the seven deadly sins, they're not talking about pride. They're talking about conceit. C.S. Lewis, who I've got issues with, but he yeah. said that pride is the anti-God. And I loosely quote, he said, anger, greed, and debauchery are flea bites compared to pride. Now, I don't think he meant pride about being proud of your accomplishments. <laughs> I think he meant about conceit, of thinking that you're haughty, thinking that you're better than. I'm going to bring up a picture. Oh, on the opposite end, and it, it's not a line, it's, it's <clears throat> maybe an out of balance, and on one end of the out of balance is conceit, on the other end of the ba out of balance is inferior, inferiority, is the feeling that we're not worthy at all, that there's nothing in us that's good. If I told you, this is the best drawing really ever, inferiority, pride, or conceit? Conceit. It's conceit. But if I showed you, and I can't get my picture to work right now, if I showed you a picture of the challah bread that I made last night, and it looked awesome, I can't get it to show up on my computer right now. If I showed you a picture of my challah bread and it looks awesome, that's what I want to show you right now. I have pride in that. If I showed you a picture of the stained glass lamp, or if I just show you the stained glass lamp that's behind me here. Come on, stained glass lamp. Oh. Mm -hmm. There it is. This stained glass lamp that I made, 
I have mm-hmm. pride in my skills with my with stained glass because I've done it for years. Am I conceited that I'm the best stained glass artist ever? No. But I have pride in in what I've been able to do. What I can. What what my stained glass is. And the hala is not showing up. Okay. Conceit. Let me teach a little bit. Conceit is led by ego and it's fueled by desire. It doesn't have to do with it. Oh, I'm no longer sharing my screen. Hold on. Conceit is built out of ego and fueled by desire. Pride comes from the intellect. It has to do with intellect and responsibility. There's a problem with pride in the the way that we often use the word pride when we mean conceit is that we believe, we have a sense that pride comes along on its own and it's as though it comes into our lives and causes us to lose, it creeps in and it causes us to lose caution and pride creeps in and it causes us to lose friends and it creeps in and it leads to injury and it causes havoc. But that's conceit. That's not pride. We can and we ought to be proud of ourselves, our accomplishments, and of others. We can be proud of other people. That's one way to see if it's a difference between pride and conceit. You can't conceit someone else. Mm. Conceit comes from ego and desire because really at the base of it, and if you think of any president, um, past especially, being filled with conceit is because deep down there's a huge amount of shame. And you can't be proud of your own actual accomplishments, so you live in a fantasy world of conceit where it seems like you have done things that were not even possible. Shame also exists on the other side here of inferiority, of believing that we are not worthy, that we somehow should be cut off from the group, that I should be shamed, I should have shame of what I am, of who I am. Um, uh, Alex, okay. if you can find us there. Thank you. Let me see my other notes here. Where is a? Oh, no. Okay. Betsy, yeah. Betsy Weston has. Her yeah. Go ahead, Betsy. I'm thinking about the way any mother feels about her firstborn baby. Uh, Let's be careful on the generalization, but go ahead. This is the most beautiful baby that's ever been born. (laughs) And this is sort of a, uh, a, I think it's a, it's a, uh, a, 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 a conceit that is, is, it's okay. I mean, it's. (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I can have, I have extra pride in my children that goes beyond what they are deserving of. I think that one, I I like that exception to the rule, Betsy. Thank you. (laughs) We'll, 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 we'll allow that one. Going back to the pictures that you have, how would you get to be proud of the picture that you drew? Well, we all know the answer to that. It's practice. How did I get to be good at stained glass? I practiced it. How am I getting to be good at baking? I still can't get this picture to show up. Come on. I want to show off my, I want to show off my beautiful challah bread from last night. There it is. Oh, yum! Oh, lovely. I made ten little pretzel challah bulls, mm. which oh, if, oh, I'm so. And I'm proud of that. I don't have conceit. My ego's not all, but I've been baking bread for enough months, years that I've gotten kind of good at it. And I ask you this, think about me right now bragging or 
proud of the bread that you see in front of you there? Does anyone begrudge me and think there's something wrong with my having pride in what I'm doing? Not at all. Oh, no. Not at all. Why? Because it looks good. Yeah. Because yeah. it looks good. Let me see if I can't find the stained glass one. Here, I'm going to show you guys this one. I'm going to take another moment of pride. Look, oh, I've been doing wow. stained glass. These are all lamps oh, that I've wow. been making and working on. Beautiful. They wow. are beautiful. And now comes the part of this which is going to be the most difficult for me. Hold on. You're going to make challah out of stained glass? No. <laughs> I'm going to take a moment and I'm going to challenge myself to do something as soon as I can get to gallery view here. You could always take food coloring and color different parts of the challah. Oh, I've so done that. Oh, I've done cool. a rainbow challah. I recently did a chocolate chip pistachio challah. I, I have oh, some fun. Yummy. But what I wanted to challenge myself to do is what I'm doing right now, which is looking at the screen of all of the faces of the people who are here. Because I don't... I consider it to be some conceit if I think, look at this service that I built. Yay. And I think the next thoughts that are in my head are, oh, Brian, you're going to hurt your arm. How many of you know that phrase? <laughs> you know that phrase? Yeah. From yeah. patting yourself on the back. Yeah. From patting yourself on the back. And I got the message, as I'm sure most of us did, don't be conceited. Don't shine. There's a, a <coughs> phrase, uh, it's a Chinese aphorism, that the nail that sticks out gets the hammer. Don't shine. Don't Just shine sparkle. too much. You're, it's dangerous. And so I want to take a moment. I don't know that I can actually do this, so I'm working on it. I'm really proud of the work that I do. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's hard for me to take in. I can take it in with the stained glass. I can take it in with the challah. Like, I know I'm doing good there. But to look at the serve and look at the people who are here and to feel, well, that's where You're I doing want your to best. go to. That I'm doing, I'm doing a good job here with this service, and I'm helping. Yay! So I'm gonna yes. just take that piece in. Okay, challenge accepted. I mm -hmm. done, did my my piece. Um, thank you. Okay. I have my next piece of paper with all my next notes on it, but before I do that, I want to just check in, hear back from y'all. Um, where are we at? Uh, my 10-minute my timer, I realized my 10-minute sermon timer is great, but as soon as I switched video screens, the timer went off. So um, I'm assuming that was exactly 10 minutes. Oh, last <laughs> week, I had you sit for five minutes. Oh my goodness, was that a long five minutes for some of you? And I want to—I took the idea of. Oh come on, Brian! I took the idea. We had talked about this service being more of a a bus than a taxi, and I ran yep. with that idea. And you're going to be getting an email from me with this on it. I'm running a class coming up. I'm running a class called How to Find Some Peace with Others and Yourself Too. That class is going to have an introductory shared ride van experience on May 25th at 5.15 p.m. Pacific. You'll get details about it because you're all on my mailing list. I'm going to ask you if you feel, and I'm directly talking to you who are at this service, if you have gotten a sense of peace, a sense of 
something related to peace from my work, would you please send your friends? Would you please consider when you get the email about how to find some peace with others and yourself too, when you get an email about this course, would you please forward it along to three people, five people with a note that say, I listened to this guy. He's got some stuff going on that works. Show up to the... So there's a free information session on, on the 25th, which is coming up. You'll get an email all about it. Would you please send that to your friends? Thank you. Okay. Um, I have the rest of my thoughts for today's service. Let me see if I've missed any announcements. Um, also, oh, I got a note back from James. A lot of you keep in touch with my our friend James, who's in prison. Um, he wrote he wrote something I thought was so charming. He says, "Rabbi, I'm still taking the high road. It's just I'm getting sick of heights." <laughs> <laughs> I thought that, was, that would be James. That's James writing. If you do not yet have, how many of you have read this little this little tome? Rabbi Brian's Reluctant Revelation. Oh, look, we got ones right there. Maria's got one. Charlene's got one in her hands right there. Maria, it looks like you colored in some of the front of it. No? Okay. I thought I saw... you, you put a sticker on the O. That was there when I got it. Oh, I did? I'm funny. Yeah, I didn't know sticker. I did that. Okay. Yes. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> did you send one of those to me? I didn't see one. Um... I might not have. Shoot me an email. Cousin okay. Amy, you got one too? I got one too, but it didn't have a s sticker on the front. It just had an inscription inside. Okay. I truly don't remember a putting a sticker copy. on the front. So. I got a signed copy. Yes. If you too would like to get your own signed copy of this little book, <laughs> um, if you make a donation to Religion Outside the Box at the $18 a month level, if you've already making that donation, uh, let me know. I'll send you a copy of the book. If you would like to make a donation or you'd like a copy of the book, send me an email and I'll see what I can do to make sure that... And I promise it's a, a wonderful read. Well, thank you. Thank you for saying, Amy. Thank you. And it's not because you're my cousin. I appreciate that. I appreciate <laughs> it. Um, I, uh, okay. I have the next thing that I, and I don't want to ask, but I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to ask I'm going to ask you to do the following thing to please be of help to me I'm going to take a little bit of time today take a little bit of time out of the service and I'm going to I'm going to ask you to make the following notes I cannot believe I'm actually asking you guys to do this I get a sticker for putting myself out there and making a request I'd love to be able to make a little video salu salvage salutation oh salutation so i'd love to make a little video that goes with this class that i'm trying to put together of how to find some peace with others and yourself so i'd love to make a compiled video of people saying hi rabbi brian you've taught hi, me hi rabbi brian You've taught me blank, or I now blank. So those are options. So part A, hi, Rabbi Brian. Part B, you've taught me blank, or I've learned from you blank, or I now blank. And then C, I am a lapsed Catholic, a recovering Jew. I'm whatever it was. And then D, it says, I thank you. Question, do they have to all be included or can you exclude one of the A, B, C, or Ds? I don't know. I've not done this before. Um, but can I, I'm going to ask, and boy, this is feeling like, you know that feeling where you don't get the full air down at the bottom of your chest because you're a little bit anxious about making a request? 
I'm having that experience right now. I would love to have three, four people so I can have it recorded and I can splice it into a little intro video for the people at Progressive Christianity, the people at the newsletter, just to make a little video where you say, hi, Rabbi Brian, or hi, RB, or whatever you call me. I don't know what you call me, but making it direct to me. You've taught me blank. I now blank. I am a Presbyterian minister in Waterloo, Ontario. Something like that, just by example. Um, and then, and I thank you. Can I ask, can we, can we give that, anyone at the ready for those four parts? And Alex, if you would spotlight the video, the camera so that I can. I'm working on that right now. And do we have a volunteer? We can do one. So you, can I. Okay, go, go, let's, let's start with you, Amy, if you, and everyone who's not part, this is the part where I'm feeling totally guilty of taking your service time for being self-serving towards me. Oh, and we're in. You need to put your thing back. <laughs> I'm going to. Hold on. It's, it's Rabbi, 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 Rabbi. What happened, Alex? Uh, you, you need to uh, show your list again. Is this conceit or pride? There. That's a great question, Steve. I'm feeling <laughs> like, like it goes towards to conceit. You're absolutely right. That's exactly what I am on topic. So, Alex, if I have it this way, I don't get the recording. Oh, I okay. just hit record here. That's fine. So recording if I can get, in progress. Can I get three volunteers of people to say a thing? Go ahead, Ray. I'll do it. Here, let me let me spotlight Ray. Hang on. Oh, I'm so proud of myself for doing this, and I kind of want to throw up. Okay, good. <laughs> you probably want to spotlight Ray as well, so that it goes onto the recording. He's, he's spotlit. That's good. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, in your in your screen view. I'm not doing my screen view. I'm just going to okay. take the recording from here. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Whether you can see me or not. Greetings, my dear Rabbi. You have taught me to use my inner peace in a way that is beneficial to me and others. I now do so. I am a progressive person and a child of the Great Spirit, whoever that and whatever that is. I thank you. Thank you, Ray. Fantastic. Let's have another another one, if we would. Got, yeah, go ahead. Alex, call somebody out who you're going to spotlight. Okay, let me get to, uh, yeah, let me get Emily. She had her hand up next. I'm just moving the spotlight here. We've got a little bit of lag here again. I don't know why. Okay. We got it or no? Um, I spotlit her, but it's not responding. Let me try again. Uh, you are, it, when do there I you start? go. There you are. Go ahead, Emily. Oh, hi, I'm Emily. Um, what, I, what I appreciate about you, Rabbi, is that you bring out the best in me. That's why I keep coming. I'm a recovering evangelical. Thanks be to God. And I thank you. Thank you, Emily. Let's get two more, can we? Yeah, I'm work I, okay. I'm gonna spotlight Amy next, but let me just get it to work here. I don't know why all of a sudden it's just bogging down in the lag. Ooh. Okay, cousin Amy. Hi, Rabbi Brian and dear cousin, I thank you for teaching me how to be kind to myself as well, to, as well as to others. I am a Jew, but also an avid follower of you at this point. I thank you, Rabbi Brian. Oh, thank you, Amy. Thank you, Amy. Alex, you bring us one, two more people. Okay, did I see Charlene's hand up? Hi, Rabbi Brian. 
You've taught me to be kind to myself and to others with amazing results. I now have shoved off the blanket of shame that I've carried for years and years. I am a searching person, a humanist. Uh, I love theology, and I thank you. Thank you, Charlene. All right, and, and we got anyone else chomping think, at a bit? I think I think Steve had his hand up too. Let me. Uh, no, he did not. He no. Nope. Okay, Jocelyn, did you have your hand up? I could okay. do it really quickly. Let me let me uh, replace the spotlight here. Hang on one second. We got some really incredible lag all of a sudden here. It is my face. Go, go ahead. Okay, Jocelyn, go ahead. Salutations, Rabbi Brian. You have helped give me a sense of community. I am a very spiritual person, and that is very important to me to have other spiritual people that I could talk to. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jocelyn. All right, let's let's go back to our regular scheduled program. Alex, thank you for doing that. I'm going to st stop the recording here. Recording stopped. Oh, um, yeah, I, so to go back to what Steve added in, which connects this all together, my great fear of this looking like conceit would keep me from being proud. Mm. Mm. And I bet I'm not the only one. Go ahead, yeah. Ray. I think the difference is, is when someone, to me, when someone is conceited, they think that they are the very, very best, and no one can come up and do things as well as they do. I have never got that or, or seen that in you. You have pride in what you do, but you openly realize that there may be others that do it as well. Thank you, thank you, Ray. And I would say here, here's gonna be the end moral of this whole story. And, and I hope you can hear these words echo in your head for the rest of the week. There is no one on the planet who can be you better than you. Mm. And you can be, and you deserve to be, proud of who you are and what you have done without that falling into conceit. And if I could dip my toes a little bit in further today, you can too. Steve, you have a comment to end us up with? Sure. You know... It being the leader is is a difficult place um, because the focus and what we have to offer is both our content and our self. Yeah. And many of us get distracted by believing that the product is our self. Correct. And certainly what you have to teach is a byproduct of who you are. But what you're selling is not Rabbi Brian, even though your name is on the service. What you're selling is the content of the service, which is something of which to be proud and isn't conceit. But that's a very fine line that we all walk when we take on that leadership role. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for Amen. helping to normalize that. Um, folks, we are at 9 o'clock. Please stick around. I'm going to be in a breakout room for about 15 minutes if you want to find me there otherwise i think we got donuts opening and uh deep dive opening poetry room opening thank you guys for all showing up um i'm gonna do the camera so we can all wave thank you rabbi say goodbye to each other thank you thank you thank you, thank you rabbi thanks thank guys Bye. and alex you are in charge i've saved the chat Okay, so the uh, breakout rooms are, should be open so people should see the notification.